so one of our local drivers is Maro Engo. Uh, Maro, it's really great to, for you to be with us. Um, now, I know you were born in Germany, but you went to ISM, the local international school in Monaco. So um, tell us about when you moved over and how long you've been there and everything. Yeah, Monaco has definitely played uh, played a huge part in, in, in my life and, well, is, is uh, home for me, uh, really. My parents moved there when I was three. Um, so although I, I do consider myself German, I, I do hold Monaco very close to my heart. Um, grew up there, went to school there, uh, university, and, and uh, still living there with my family. So um, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely home for us. Definitely home, yes. Um, so do you think, being there from that early age, that um, maybe influenced your career choice, being around all the motorsport in Monaco? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to miss it, isn't it? Um, it's uh, it definitely helped, I think. But if if I'm to listen to my parents, they tell me that even as a as a toddler, um, I was always into cars. And when they'd go to the beach, they'd have to let me stay in the car because as soon as they took me out of the car, I would I would start crying. So uh, I think I've always had something a thing for cars. And then obviously with you know seeing the Monaco Grand Prix from 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 a young age was definitely uh, amazing. And and uh, I couldn't wait every year to get to May. Um, obviously, it's around this time of year. It would have been on. Uh, unfortunately not this year but um yeah it's 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 played a big part but um i think the even bigger part was just the the fortunate part about being in monaco is having access to so many um great racing drivers who are living here and um uh Bernd schneider was one of them and uh, michael schumacher obviously uh, the other both german for me obviously you know massive heroes at, at the time and uh they even took the time uh to set up cones on on the go-kart track for me and, and you know teach me about the racing line when i was i don't know six years old seven years old um and so that played a huge part in, and just being able to see them and how they go about their their uh, careers and racing um was a huge inspiration how lovely of them to like help you and nurture you that's such a lovely thing to do yeah absolutely i mean michael was always massively into go-karting and, and Bernd was was amazing I mean really Bernd yeah was standing out on the go-kart track you know standing himself where he wanted me to break and then setting up cones um how to drive into the corner and where to hit the apex and things like that and, and things that as a as a as a six-year-old you have no clue about um and it was just amazing you know I mean one weekend I was I was uh watching them race on tv and and uh the next I was able to to go onto the go-kart track with them so um yeah definitely a big uh Big, big inspiration, big help. Great opportunity. Um, now, your career has predominantly been in GT with Mercedes, but um, more recently, a few years ago, you were racing for the local team Venturi in Formula E. How did you find that transition? Um, for me, I, I was I was absolutely loving the challenge of uh, you know racing racing actually three cars in that year in 2017 with. Um, uh, GT3 for Mercedes AMG, DTM uh, with Mercedes AMG, and and Formula E with Venturi, and obviously, you know, all, all championships on a, on a very high level. So um, it's kind of funny um, when you jump from one car to the other, you you sort of automatically adapt to that driving style. But uh, for sure, they were completely different. I mean, you know, Formula E is um, massively exciting, new technology. Um, so many technical aspects there's so much you can do it's all about um energy management and, mm -hmm. and where to use your energy um most most cleverly and and smartly so um definitely enjoyed that a lot and also being with the monogas team and with uh, the team of gildo pastor um uh, was was uh, yeah it was fantastic and 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 great um it did also mean I spent a lot of time in the local simulator. Um, that's you know that's the 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 case when you're when you're on site. Um, you can basically be there in in, in there every day. Um, and uh, and the GT3 racing is is something I've yeah really grown to love and, and hold close to my heart. So um, absolutely loved it. It was uh, tough in terms of traveling and uh, and getting around. I mean I've uh, definitely got to see a lot of the world um, in, in in that time and um, yeah definitely definitely very. Well, funny enough, the sim, uh, the local sim was my next question because I know quite a few um, drivers that are now in Formula E. They really found that difficult getting to grips with the sim. So how did you find it? Uh, it was a huge part in Formula E. I mean, again, uh, just talking about that energy management, I mean, we found that uh, um, having a certain energy consumption over the lap and, and uh, on one example in Marrakesh, uh, shifting your lift and, and uh 
uh, coasting points and, and regeneration points. So um, first you lift and coast, then uh, then you start regening in the Formula E car, and then uh, then you obviously you hit the brakes. Just shifting that around by a very few meters uh, back and forth would make a difference of up to eight tenths per lap. Now that's that's the difference between you know a massive uh, result and and one that's terrible. So. Uh, um, you know, it was it was really important to, to put that put in those hours in the sim, and um, I enjoyed it. It was it was definitely tough, but um, obviously the the simulator uh, we had at Victory was highly sophisticated with um, you know plugging in the the real ECU of the car, so having the real uh, regen values and, and um, having the real pedal box, having a real chassis, and so on. So um, obviously it's uh, it's something where in Formula E all the teams are investing heavily because uh, there's no not much testing or nothing not, nothing going on throughout the year and anyway it's hard to replicate driving on street tracks so uh, from that from that end it was um, it was definitely very interesting and, and sort of it's an ongoing process of development you know every time you get in the sim something new is added and, and it's something new you're testing and you're correlating data to the real car so just a lot going on and um, yeah, uh, good fun, especially when you're competitive as well. Uh, you know, with your teammates, you try to sort of beat each other and, and then do better, and that's what spurs the, the team on. So with that in mind, um, obviously esports are huge now, particularly because of lockdown and we can't get out to race tracks. How much time have you had on the sim and within esports, actually? Uh, to be honest, not much. Um, so as much as I've spent a lot of time in, in, the, in the Venturi sim, uh, and... Uh, um, I would love to have that kind of sim uh, at, at my home, but uh, that's obviously a, a different league and different different ballpark. Um, yeah, we have a we have a two year old or just under two year old, uh, so she takes up most of our time, especially in lockdown. Um, so I've uh, been uh, been training now just recently. Uh, got uh, got set up with the sim from from the guys from the Monaco Esports Federation and. Uh, uh, practice has been limited. <laughs> um, last night I put in uh, put in what is, was a longer session, and uh, um, yeah, when when everyone was asleep, so um, that was pretty much my practice. And uh, going to put in a little bit more practice uh, now before the race, uh, and just hope to to try and do well. I know the guys in esports, the level is is massively high. Um, we back to back in from Lee, we had this this race, this Vegas e race simulator race where uh, where we had the 20 from lead drivers facing 10 of the best gamers and uh, we got our ass kicked <laughs> so we can be we can be honest about that so uh, no I'm just gonna try and try and do as well as I can prepare uh, in the short amount of time I have um, obviously uh, the, there's slight differences let's say in the in the um, in the type of simulators and in the, in the in the platforms and the games that you're playing so it's all about adapting to those as quick as possible you do know there's quite a few big local names competing in this, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how do you think so you're first... going to be against them? How, how are you going to fare? <laughs> so the first name is not to be last. Um, that's the first name. The second is to try and be competitive. And the third is there any chance to get a, a podium or win the race and uh, try and grab it with both hands. But I'm, I'm, being, I'm being realistic here. This is my, this is my first e-race from home. Um, so uh, yeah, just going to try and do as well as possible. Uh, obviously, I know Charles is in, and uh, and and some other local guys, Loic, uh, who I know from Lee and from DTM. So I'm sure there'll be a good good fight between us um, and and the other pros, and and um, I'll just see how it goes and try and put on a good show and and have some fun. Are you looking forward to it then? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely looking forward to it. Um, I think my wife's worried that I'm going to get hooked because uh, that might be the end of. Uh, of our family evenings but um let's see i mean it's uh yeah it's ma it's it's massively fun and i know one thing's for sure if i'd you know, you know if i'd be uh 10 15 years younger and uh and not have a family right now then that's definitely all i'd be doing with, with my time at the moment uh, is being on these on these simulators because it's uh it's highly addictive and it's it's a lot of fun um, speaking about your family, and you've got a two-year-old, um, tell me about eating lemons. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, the, uh, a challenge, which was actually a very nice challenge, started up by uh, a three-star uh, Michelin uh, cook from Germany, uh, Lemon for Kids. 
uh, hashtag lemon for kids and um so basically you prepare this uh, this raw lemon and uh, and 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 you eat it uh which was tough um i have to say i think uh, those who have seen it on my uh, on my instagram they they saw what i mean um and bottom line is yeah um uh, just uh, getting the message across spreading the message because um it's uh, it's uh, a charity that uh, is to be supported so it's not only about eating lemons but it's also about donating even just a small amount, a uh, minimum of 10 euro for, uh, for two, uh, two charities that are supporting kids in need, kids that are um, in need uh, through Corona, but also kids that um, unfortunately um, don't have the same privileges and don't have the health. Um, so um, great challenge, good fun, and uh, yeah. hopefully it'll go much further. Well, hopefully you won't have that sour face at the end of the race. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> that was, uh, putting it in racing terms, that was definitely on the limit. <laughs> that was on the edge <laughs> great thank you very much good to speak to you and uh, all the best for the race thank you cheers